Right, I'm going to show you how I do beads on my windows. Um, this can work on windows and doors um, but, and, the, and the external corners as well. But I'm just going to show you how I do them and how I set them up. Yeah. So this is a 10mm um, external render bead and I'm going to show you how I set them up. So you want to start with the head if you can. Always start with the head first. Um, gives you a nice level all the way through on the top and then you work down your legs after. That's the way I do it. So this is a small cut off that I've got because it's only for a small little side window here that we've got in. So what you do, this is what I do. I don't use a tape measure. I don't use anything like that. I only need snips. I can get in my pocket. All I use is snips. Cork gun and my levels. Cork gun so they'll come, whatever you want to call it, in my levels. That's all I use to do it, yeah? And all my beads is usually it's offered up. I don't measure anything. I just think it's, it's one of them. Once you cut a bead, it's usually never usable after anyway. You can't use it, so, you know, no point being bang on with it. Offer it up. So what I'll do, I'll cut one end on an angle like that, yeah? You see that? It's on an angle. What is that angle? Is that a 90? It's not a 90, is it? It's 45. 45. Is it a 45? 45 degree angle. Yeah. And then what I'll do, if you come over, mate, from behind me, from the show, so, it's a 10 mil bead, yeah? So if I'm gonna sit at an angle bead, a corner bead on here, yeah? Going down one of the legs, it's gonna stick over 10 mil if it was tight as it could be there. So you don't, you don't want to, when you put this on, you don't wanna put the bead so it's on the top and it goes right over to there. You don't want that because obviously then it's gonna be over the top of the leg and it must look rubbish, you want them to meet. So looking at this here, I can see that coming out 10 mil is gonna be nice. It's gonna be a nice, um, it's gonna cover all the foam and all the side bit nicely, 10 mil, yeah? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, this is where, like I said, yeah, this is a guesstimate for me. I don't need, I've done it that many times. I'm not gonna start measuring 10 mil out and marking and stuff like that, I'm not doing it. The reality is, I'll just guesstimate where I want it to sit about, and that's gonna be 10 mil. So, about there for me, yeah? And then what, I, what I'll do is, I'll come over to this side, and I'll look again, and I'll look at there, 10 mil. Is it going to be the same there? Right there? Probably about there. And what I'll do is I'll cut from this side here that looks like it's 10 mil out again. This is how I do it. Again, so I'll just, I'll nip it there. So I just know where it is. I know where it is, it's there. Yeah, and what I'll do then, I'll cut into the spine first. Go around the back. Cut it there. Cut it there. They need to come off and then what I'll do then again another 45 but what I'll do is I won't go right to the edge I won't go in there I'll go so it just sits on the lump on the end there can you see it yeah and that's how I do it bam yeah snips need a bit of a grease up take it away take it away now this window I've showed you I've done this window as well right because you know, I mean shot you yeah I've done this window as well to show you because it's not perfect. If I put this on here, yeah, and it sits on the front of the frame, look at it. It sits out. So I'm going to show you how you get around that as well. So this is why I've picked this window. Usually, in an ideal world, um, window reveals are usually a bit further out, like that. So you don't have to trim anything off the bead. It just sits out like that. But these are very shallow um, window reveals, to be fair. So they're going to they're gonna look nice and tight. Now, there's two ways. If you can, stick it in like that. That's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna stick it in so it sits flush to the front and it's tucked in above the above the window head. This is a couple of things. It helps it sit on there nicely for me and I don't have to mess about. Um, or the other way that you can do it is if you can't tuck it in and it has to sit like that, is you trim the back of the bead off. So I would stick it in, but I'm gonna show you because I'm trying to show you that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do it properly for you. So I'm gonna trim the back of it off. So you get your snips like this, and you just run down the back yeah now watch your fingers here and watch your thumb here because these are sharp once you've cut them yeah you want to be able to, when you get in there nicely now this finger here i just use it to push it away every time that is it and i'm not using my index finger i'm using this middle finger here to cut with and i'm using that one just to shove it out way yeah and that's how i do it cut it away don't need to be all the way, all the way back like that either um that's more than enough, plenty. I'm gonna show you how to stick it. So now that, we'll sit on like that. Yeah, it'll be cushioned up now. 
Mm. So remember, I could have tucked it into the top there, it would have been no problem. But because I'm showing you this example, I'm doing it like that, yeah? So I'm going to show you how to stick it now. Go on. Get a decent, uh, a decent um, sealant gun. This is a brand new one, Damon has picked up for me. Buzzing, because we were getting a bit sticky. <laughs> Don't see it when he got himself. <laughs> Rascal. I'm going to show it, we've got to show it after. Are we showing it? Yeah, yeah we'll show it after. Oh, man. Right, this is what I do on a window like this. I use three dots on windows um, this size. Anything bigger, I usually use four dots or five dots sometimes, but I'll use three across the top and I'll do three in the middle as well. Underneath it, sorry, as well. Okay. There. That's it, yeah? Underneath here, don't get it on the frame. You just want to put it on the angle. So it starts the corner. Yeah? On a corner. On a corner. Yeah? That's how you sit them on. Bam! It's also good when you're doing upstairs windows because you can stick your thing on gutter in. Leave it hanging there. That's what I always do. Anyway, boom, this is it. Now I give them a wiggle as I put them in place, me. Helps the, the, the um, adhesive push through. Let's give it a wiggle. That's it. And then, I can use this because it's overhanging the bricks. I can use it. But sometimes you might have to use a boat level, a small level to get in there. But this is cushy. Yeah, so this one, I'll turn it that way so you can see it bubble. These need a clean light, but. So what I do is, get it like that. And make sure it's touching. So my level's there, it's bang on that. Cock on. Lick your finger. Press. Smudge it. Press. Smudge it. Press it in. Smudge it. Yeah, it needs to be flat as well, doesn't it? So you don't. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, keep it. Yeah, the adhesive does need to be flat. So sometimes people leave them a bit higher up. It needs to be flat because remember, when you're scratching back, you don't want to see it. You need another exhaust, man. No, it sounds horrible, that, doesn't it? Yeah. What's the div? Probably a fucking 0.9 as well. <laughs> anyway, in like that, yeah? And then you can see these tabs underneath. I'll squeeze them in. Let's hold it in. Yeah, that's uh, that's the head. Done. And again, roughly 10 mil. And what it is, I'll show you, you can actually move it about still anyway. Good at DC while it's still flexible and still moving, you want to move it about a bit. Give it another check for good measure. Sweet, that's good there. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna show you how to do the legs. This is how I do them as well. So again, stop bead, I mean angle bead, sorry. <coughs> you do one leg at a time. Again, I don't measure, people do measure, I don't measure them, I just always, this is how I do them, I just, I've always done them. I used to measure them, but since I realized how long it takes to measure every single thing, and then often when you get it up, it's wrong. So offering up for me is the way forward. I do it a lot with a lot of beading and boarding as well, to be fair. I like to, I like to measure as I go. So yeah, anyway, again, sill. You always want these to sit on the sill. Now this is going to be awkward, right? Because it's going to hit the soffit. So again, once I've cut this bead off, mate, I'm not going to be able to use it again. This tiny little bead is not going to be used. There's not a window in the world that's going to take the end of this bead. So I don't need to measure. Again, I'd cut it there. Rough cut. Put it there again, so I won't shut that, yeah? And what I'll do then is, I'll create my 45 on this side. Also, these are sharp when you cut them, you know, so you wanna be careful. You can just use your snips like that to pull stuff off. You're meant to do it with your angle beats too when you're doing internal work, because trust me, I've been cut off them. Have you been cut off them? Yeah. They're horrible when you get a cut. And then what I'll do then is, get the spine, this is the spine in the back bit. And I turn it around, you're thinking, hey, what I turn it around for? Because if you measure it, if you put it in like that, yeah, and you've got the spine in there, you've got to imagine that's where the deepest part of the bead is going to be. The longest part is going to be there. Now, if I had it that way around and pushed it in there, it won't work, it won't work out right because I'm going to have to trim the back of this off, then push it in, it's probably be too high. So, spine in, always I use the spine to there. 
getting where it's going to be about it's going to come out about there roughly and then come round here mate so I can see where I'll mark it so I've got it where I think I want it to be roughly around there on the spot I'm still and then again here I'm going to use it show you how I nip it so I'm nipping it here just on a little nip mm -hmm. exactly where it's going to cut see it there just a little scar on it so I know exactly where it is and then again straight into the spine yeah cut her off it should be off that and again 45s just a little bit in now if you've got a shit bead or a rubbish bead you will get cracking and stuff like that on your spines these are top quality beads so you don't get no splitting no cracking no splint no shells no nothing no bounce sometimes it bounces off and hits you in the head like it does but um sometimes when you cut a cheap bead down the spine it just goes snip and it snaps down it's like anyway this again if you look on the bottom if you look on there this will fit in there i reckon it'll push into the foam Fits in. The only reason why these don't go in sometimes is because of packers. Window fitters use packers on the side in order to make sure the windows jammed in and properly. And then you can't do this, you can't push it into the downside of the frame. So it's a bit of a nightmare. But it also helps you with a bit more of a load as well. But check it all the way down because you know what it is, they put packers all over the shop. And that's gone in crushed it that. That's gone in sound that. So I'd be happy. I'm going to stick that on now put my adhesives on and I know that my bead's going to sit in nice little tip frame mm -hmm. right and it fits perfect going up and down <clears throat> again I know this window right I'm not sure it might be perfect I don't know but in my mind it looks a little bit out see if I'm right or wrong it looks a bit out because it just, I don't know, it just looks like it's out a bit at the bottom. Just by my eye. I don't know, I'm probably wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. Let's check it down there. Just bang on in the middle. So, that gives me the reason that the block might be out. Because <laughs> the gap at the top of the bottom looks a little bit different. Let's bang on too. But these are I know what you mean. Yeah, but can you see it though? Yeah, see yeah. the gap there now if I push there it comes on level yeah see? yeah so by looking at that I know straight away that something's, something's out on it and I'm going to show you how I get around that too because the last thing I want to do is put um, a thin bead at the bottom have it thin at the bottom and thick at the top we don't do that we have it all the same all the way around this is off enough that I know that I've got enough to work with so what I'm going to do I know it's going to be tight at the top so I don't need big dots At the bottom here, it's probably going to come out a bit more. I'll put a bit more gear. It's going to come out a bit more, a bit more gear. Run it middle for look. And then, little ones in here, just to push through into the frame. Only have to be tight on the internal, so they're going to get pushed into the framework and hold it in for me. Right, push the, then I'm back up in its spot. Bead. Good gun, that, isn't it? Yeah, class. Again, right. Don't worry about the adhesive moving about a bit, it's alright. I'm going to show you how I get them looking nice and level where it looks. You can see and how to use the bead for what it is when you're pushing it in like this. So again, pushed it in. Right. Up. It's perfectly jointed there at the top. See it? Yeah. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to lick this top one. I don't want this one to move too much at the top, I'm happy with where it is the bottom that's a, a problem or what I'm going to look at now here is where you can use the bead right to gauge uh, the thickness of your reveal I trimmed the back off that so I can't see it I can't use it as a gauge but I know it sound this one here if you look right come here if you look on my bead yeah to get it married up if you look inside here it's got like these little holes and stuff like that mm. I see at the top them holes aren't showing yeah so I know that needs to go in you know what I mean? And it's, it's more or less 
encroaching on encroaching on these little bits here, the ones that go out. So I know that each bead going down needs to be roughly around that. It doesn't have to be exactly because a mill or two, no one's ever going to notice it. But the reality is, if, if I left that like that, you'd know straight away it's, it's, it's tight at the top, out at the bottom. You'd know straight away. Obviously, you could have used a level, but I'm just saying this is how I do it by eye first, and then you can fine tune it, yeah? So, let's go down. What we do, I'm going to push it in into the foam. The foam's good because it helps a bit as well. And you can see it's starting to encroach on this little boat, little, little, like, well, I don't know what shape that is, you know. But it's, <laughs> it looks like a, like a D, innit? Like a D. Yeah, I can see it's starting to encroach on that. It's good because the foam's moving in. That's pushed it in. Now it'll get rigid at the bottom because remember this is cut to length. But well, only a few mil there. Ah, there. Right, and what I'll do. Give it a Bruce, a Bruce Gander. <laughs> Let's see if it's anywhere near. Yeah, man. Is it bang on? <laughs> yeah. That's it. It's cushy. That's it, you know. Mill a mill or two here or there, you're never gonna notice it, but that is bang on it bubble in it. But yeah. that's just because I've used by eye and to be fair we've got a good window fitter and um the block work is a little bit out but it's not a big deal but we've got a good window fitter, we've done a good job there. So that's helped us out. Um and yeah, again, wet finger, push it on, wet finger, push it on. Right. Then on the inside of it, check that none of them are sticking over, they're not, they'll be pushed into frame, that one there. And I just do it again, just to check the inside of it. So I'll check this, make sure that I'm nice, beautiful in the middle, and I'll check this again. And that is how you do a head and a leg, simple as that.